الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد The blessed month of Ramadan is upon us and we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has allowed us to live to see this Ramadan, to see Ramadan again. But what we should realize is that as we know from past Ramadans, the reality is it will go by very quickly. We are only now in what the fourth, the fourth day, but before we know it, we'll be in the 28th day, 29th day and then 30th day, if there is a 30th day, and that's it. Ramadan will be, Ramadan will be gone. So we need to try and do our best to, to take advantage of, of, of this Ramadan. This is not the time to, this is not the, this is not the time to be sitting back. This is not the time to be uh, relaxing. And it was said, it was said to, it was said to, uh, it was said to Imam Ahmad, "Mata yastariyah al mu'min, Mata yastariyah al mu'min." When does the, when does the believer rest? When does the believer relax? Take a break, sit back. And Imam Ahmad said, when he's left the Sirat behind him. When he's left the Sirat behind him in the, in, the next, in the next life. So basically Imam Ahmad was saying, throughout this life we need to be, we need to be working hard, we need to keep going. We need to never sit back, never, uh, you know, stop. We have to, we have to keep going. Now this, uh, this, is, this holds especially true, so not, not, just, not just the whole of this life, but especially true, especially true in Ramadan. Especially in Ramadan, we can't be sitting back and relaxing. This is not the time to take a break. We have to be doing as many good deeds as we can throughout Ramadan, filling every moment of filling every moment of every day with, with good deeds. Uh, so you know we can we can pray, we can read Quran, we can uh, you know visit well maybe not visit people, but we should uh, we should do as do as many things as we as we as we can possibly do. And you know some people might think, okay, well I'm working. And you know, we obviously we have, we have to work as well. We, we, we all we all have, have have to have to go to work throughout the day. So how do I do good deeds then? Well, again, there's a, there's a story actually of of, uh, of Imam Ahmed uh, that once he was once he was traveling, and he he happened to stay with a baker, person who sell, who bakes bread. Um, and Imam Ahmed was. Uh, you know, he was, he, was, he, was, he, was staying, he was staying in this person's house, and this person, all throughout the night, he's, he's standing there, baking bread. He's making, ma making the, the dough and, and baking the bread. And throughout, throughout, throughout this, he never stopped saying, Subhanallah, 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 Alhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illallah, Wa Allah, Akbar. He just kept saying it, he kept on mentioning the name of Allah throughout, throughout, his, throughout his work. Why he's, why he's doing his work? And uh, Imam Ahmed, he went and he asked him, you know, how long have you been, how long have you been doing this for? And he said, he said, this is what he always does. Whenever he's working, he always does this. He never stops doing this. So, uh, so Imam Ahmed said, what have you seen as a result of this? What has Allah given you as a result of this? And he said, I've never made a, a single dua to Allah except that Allah uh, answered it. Except that Allah answered it. Except I saw it uh, fulfilled. Except for one dua. That, that, and that one dua is that I get to meet Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So then his, this dua was also answered now. Because he didn't realize who, who this guest is who staying with him. Turned out this was Imam Ahmed. So the point is, every, every single, um, every single thing, dua that he made to Allah, it was answered. Because he's always, he's always remembering Allah. So now if someone has a job like that, you know, obviously not every job is like that. Some jobs you need to be you know, lecturing or speaking to someone or something. You can't do that. But if someone's working like that, maybe something, something along those lines, then they have the opportunity to take, to take advantage of Every single moment, even while they're working. Even while you're working, you keep on mentioning Allah, remembering Allah, subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah akbar. And now there's a point here as well to, to make that often with these things, people 
Uh, I think it's just about doing as many as you can. So someone like Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Subh this isn't right. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, it's, so it's in the, it's the last uh, hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari actually. Kalimatani, uh, Habibatani ila Rahman. Two words, two or two sentences which are very beloved to Ar Rahman, to Allah. Khafifatani ala lisan. They're very light on the tongue, easy to say. Thaqilatani fil mizan. They're very heavy on the scales. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim. These words are Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim. So if it's like that, then we should say properly and, and, and understand what we're saying. If it's so great, then you know we should, if, it's, if we're saying something so great, we should actually try and understand and think about what we're saying, not just, not just go through it so quickly like, like we want to uh, do you know, 1,000 of this or 2,000 of this in, in, in whatever small, small amount of time or something like that. We should actually do it properly. But you know, all the time, keep on, keep on, keep on mentioning Allah's name, keep on remembering, remembering Allah's name. And also, also we know that the Prophet said, uh, Alhamdulillah, um, Alhamdulillah, tamla al mizan. Alhamdulillah fills the scale, fills the scales. Wa Subhanallah, wa Alhamdulillah, tamla ani aw tamla ma bain al sama wal arba. Subhanallah, wa Alhamdulillah fills the space between the heavens and the earth. Fills the space between the heavens and the earth. So it's not a small thing here. So we should, we should not be to that. We should keep on remembering the name of Allah, but also, also thinking about what we're saying, thinking about what we're saying, not 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 rushing through it. So there, there as, 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 as we've just seen, there's an opportunity for people who maybe have a sim, sim, who are working in similar conditions, they can, they, they, they have the opportunity to not let a single moment pass. Every single moment they can be uh, doing good deeds. And as I said, we need to be active in, active in, every, in every sense. You know, there are many, many good deeds that we can do throughout Ramadan. Some, some we also overlook. For example, uh, keeping in touch with, with relatives. We would often overlook this one. You know, why, why, what, what's, what's the point of bringing out my relatives. But well, we know that actually that the, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man arada an yubsa qalahu fi rizqih, whoever wants his, his uh, rizq to be increased, wa yubsa alahu fi atarih, and he wants his, his age to also be increased, fal yasin rahimah, then he should uh, keep good relations with his, with his relatives. So the point being here, we might, we might, you know, there are certain things we might, we might do little, we might look, not, not, not think of that as a, as a, as a big thing, to call, call you know, call my uncles, call my aunties, call my cousins, call everybody, speak to them, how are you, and so on. We might think, you know, that's just what is that a good deed? That's, that's not really that's not really good deed. But actually, if we do this for the sake of Allah, this will also be a very, very big deed. Very, very good deed. It depends on depends on what, what our intention is. We, we know that Prophet said to keep good ties with, with our relatives. We follow that. We, we, we uh, call people, we ask how they are, and so on. This is a very good, very good deed. So there are many, many, many things that we can do uh, throughout the day, many good deeds, and we should not uh, waste the opportunity. We should stay. We should stay active. We should keep. We should keep active throughout the uh, throughout every single day of Ramadan. And just looking back on history as well, if we look at how the Muslims were, have what the Muslims have done, what the Muslims have, have done throughout Ramadan, we will see that actually it's never been a time for for sitting back and relaxing. Many of the very significant uh, events in the history of Ramadan, in the history of uh, Islam happened during Ramadan. Just to give one example. One example is uh, the Muslims encounter with uh, the Mongols, the Muslims encounter with the, with the Mongol Empire. So who were these, who were the Mongols? The Mongols came out of, um, almost out of nowhere you could say. It was very unexpected and they actually went all over the world from, from China in the east to Poland in the west and they had the second largest empire in the history of, history of humanity. The point is, they came sort of out of nowhere, uh, they, out, in, in, out, out of the blue basically. They came and they were invading everywhere. Now, one of the big, one of the biggest uh, nations that suffered as a result of this was the Muslims. Were the Muslims? The Muslims were very badly um, uh, damaged, uh, very badly damaged by the by the Mongols. Very badly affected. And uh, you know, first all the all the every, everything in the east. You know, Bukhara, Samarkand, all these places in in uh, Iran, Iraq, um, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, all these places. Big Muslim, big Muslim civilizations, big Muslim empires, big Muslim cities, historical cities. The city of Bukhara, Imam al-Bukhari, and all these great scholars, they're all from there. So much knowledge in these cities, they were wiped out, they were burned down to the, they were burned down to the ground. And the Mongols were doing what? They were even, they were killing everyone, and they were putting, they were... It was so, it was so, it was so bad that they were even making towers with the skulls of the people that they killed. This is how bad the, Muslim, the, Muslim, the, the situation was for the Muslims at that time. And 
the 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 the, the real the real um, what I built up to was was the was the was the siege of Baghdad. Baghdad at the time was was basically the leading city in the world. All the knowledge is there, not just Islamic knowledge, not just knowledge of Hadith, Fiqh, and so on, but even what we might call secular knowledge. You know, sciences and mathematics and philosophy and everything is all in Baghdad. People all over the world used to learn Arabic. They used to learn Arabic. Even in the West, they learn Arabic to come to places like Baghdad and to learn and to read the Muslim books, to read from and to learn from, you know, all the Muslim thinkers and so on. And every and all the leading research will be done in Arabic. The 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 the, the main the central point of all of this was what it was Baghdad. What happened? The Mongol the Mongol army came to Baghdad. They they Baghdad was under siege for uh, a few days. Eventually, they got in, and once they got in. They didn't spare anyone. Men, women, children, even, even, it said that even the unborn, even the unborn, they, the, 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 the women who were expecting children, the Mongols would, would take them and they would even kill the unborn. And they would do, they would do so many, so many, so, so many evil things were done at this time. It said also that the, the big river going through uh, al Iraq, going through, going through near, near Baghdad, the river Tigris. So it's not, it's not a small stream, it's a big river. The river turned red. The river turned red with the blood of all these Muslims. And after that, what did they do? They went to the Bayt al Hikmah. The Bayt al Hikmah is a big library, a big library where all these, all these, all the books of the Muslims and all these, all this knowledge is kept. All this knowledge that people all over the world will travel to, Baghdad to access. They went to the Bayt al Hikmah and they took all the books and they threw them all in the river. So after turning red, the river then turned black. And this was a terrible. This was a terrible time for all Muslims, for, for Muslims everywhere. And people thought it was the end of the world. People thought maybe these are the Yajuj and Majuj. People thought, you know, this is the sign of the end of the world. Maybe tomorrow the sun will rise from the west and the, the world will the world will be the world be, will be over. People had given up. It was said even that uh, a Mongol soldier, a Mongol soldier would say to people, would say to some Muslims, he'd say to them, there'd be a group, he'd say to them, wait here. I don't have my sword with me right now, I'll go back home, get my sword and come back. So they just wait for him. He'd go back home, get his sword and, and, and come back and kill him. This is how bad the situation was. The Muslims really thought this is the end of the end of the world. What happened? Who was going to stop them? The, Muslims, the Mongols had now gone through, got, come from the east, gone through all the big all the big Muslim places. They'd taken Al Iraq, they'd taken Al Sham, all these all these big places had fallen. And now they, the only the only thing, almost the only thing in their way was was Egypt. Uh, so we will talk about what happened next in the in the second part of the khutbah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. So as I said, the Mongol armies had swept through all the Muslim lands, wiping out city after city, wiping out people after people, wiping out kingdom after kingdom. And they had taken Al-Sham as well, Al-Iraq and Al-Sham. And now as you know, if you look on the map, Al-Hijaz where Mecca and, and Medina are, is, is just below that. Above that is, above, above Mecca and Medina is, is Al-Sham. Now it's Syria, Jordan, all these places. And then a bit to the to the right is is Iraq. They've taken all that. All the all the Muslim uh, forces, all the Muslim armies have been destroyed, defeated. Uh, interestingly, it's almost a miracle from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah protected Makkah and Medina. The leader of the Mongols and of the Mongols were out to destroy Islam. They wanted to get rid of Islam. They wanted to wipe Islam off the face of the earth. They had taken Iraq and Al Sham. They could easily have gone downwards and done whatever they liked in Makkah and Medina. No 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 people, no no army would have been there to stop them. But the Mongol leader didn't even attempt to go down to Makkah and Medina. So this is a miracle of Allah subhanahu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that made uh, the, 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 Mongol, the Mongols didn't even, didn't even try to didn't even try to go down, even though they could have. No 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 human no Muslim army, no Muslim force would have would have been there to stop them. But they didn't bother. Anyway, what happened then is that it was during the month of Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought to prominence a previously unknown uh, group of uh, group uh, or king kingdom. It's the, the Mamluk kingdom from Egypt. The Mamluk kingdom from Egypt, who originally they were originally slaves, but then they came into power. What happened? They the Muslims then united. The Muslims then united and they realized this is it. 
either we beat the Mongols, we stop the Mongols now, or they beat us, and that's it. We have the last, basically the last standing, the last standing Muslim force. After that, if the if the Mongols beat us now, that's it. There'll be no more, no more Islam. Islam will be there'll be, there'll be no more Muslims. There'll be no the, the Mongols can can do whatever they like. We are the last, we are the last standing people basically, because they've come from the east. They've come all the way now to Egypt from from the east. The Iraq, the Sham, everywhere. It's all gone. The Mongols have wiped everyone out. So what happened? The Muslims united, and it was during the month of Ramadan that the Mamluks and the Mongol army met in Ain Jalut, in a place called Ain Jalut. And up until then, it was unheard of that the Mongols would be beaten. Not by the Muslims, by the non-Muslims, by the Crusaders, by anyone. The Mongols, had, had, the Mongols, as I said, went from China to, in the east to Poland in the west. Nobody had beaten them. Until then, nobody, nobody, had, nobody had inflicted any like, severe defeat on them. Allah, the, the, Muslim, uh, the Muslim army, they all turned to Allah, they put their trust in Allah, everyone was, everyone was united, and they were making dua to Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah help us, oh Allah help us, because we are almost, in a sense, they were the last, they were the last standing people, as I said. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a huge victory. This is during the month of Ramadan. It was on the 25th, if I remember correctly, the 25th of Ramadan. The Mongol army, 80% of it was destroyed. 80% of them were, were wiped out. And maybe about 20% managed to escape to get back to the Mongol leader and tell him, give him the news. It was a huge victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on the Muslims during Ramadan. And the point here is really, the point here is, what I, as I wanted to make the point, as I wanted to say, if, if, during Ramadan, it's, it's historically, if we look back on, it, at, on Islamic history, Muslims have always been very, they were, they were very active. Many, many significant events have happened during the month of Ramadan, like this one. It was this one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the Muslims during the month of Ramadan from being basically wiped off the face of the earth by, this, by, this Mong, by the Mongol Empire. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He enables us to uh, take lessons from our history. You know, there are many things. If we look, if we, if we look back on Islamic history, we look at these, uh, at these times. Because now, in, t in today's time as well, there are many things that are happening to the Muslims. We're seeing all these disasters all over the world. Muslims are being killed everywhere. And we think, you know, subhanAllah what's happening and, and um, this, this, this could be, a, you know, this could be a sign of, a sign of we, we, get, we, get very, we get very upset. We think, you know, today is, is worse than it's ever been before. What, 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 have, what have we done to, what have we done to deserve this? If we look back on history, we see that actually there have been worse times. There have been worse times, like this time. During the, 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 time of, the time of the Mongols, when the Mongols were attacking the Muslims, and the Muslims went through very difficult things. So there's a lot we can look back on that and, and learn from it. We can learn from, you know, what were the mistakes that the Muslims made during that time? And what were the things that the Muslims did? Uh, how, what, how did the, how, what did the Muslims do at the end? How did the, how the Muslims united? How the Muslims united and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory over the Mongols and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the Muslims from, basically from elimination. And it was during the month of Ramadan that this great event occurred. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again that, that he, he enables us to be, to be as, as active as we can during this Ramadan and to do as many good deeds as we can during this Ramadan and, not to let, and, 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 to, and, and that we don't let, he, he enables us not to let a single moment pass except that we are, we are doing, we are doing uh, some, some, we are doing a good deed. That we are uh, doing something in obedience of him. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
Allahu الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله سمح الله من حميد الله Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Ar-Rahman ar مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله من حمد الله